as yon, your holy people, lights for the world to see. Christ be a light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be a light, shine in your church, gathered to Make us your living voice. Christ be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. Longing for food, many your bread broken for others, shed until all are fed. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church gathered to For shelter, many are homeless, longing for warmth, many are cold. Make us your building, sheltering others, walls made of living stone. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be Shine in your church gathered today. Many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, making your kingdom come. Christ be our light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gathered today. Good morning, everybody, and Happy New Year! What? You're saying, has she finally flipped? No, I haven't. Because anyone who listened to me last week will know that today is the first day in the church's year. It is Advent Sunday. And it is a day for looking forward and for preparing. Preparing ourselves to meet with the Christ child at Christmas, but also preparing ourselves to meet with Christ when he comes again at the second coming. Now, throughout the service, hopefully, you will see that we will refer to these themes time and time again. And Bishop Rose, in her sermon, you're lucky you've got her today, um, will definitely be referring to being prepared, keeping watch, and being aware of the fact that Christ is coming into this world And we need to be ready to meet him when he does. So, our opening sentences. Now is the time to wake out of sleep. For now now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. And a prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we have come to worship you in this glad season of Advent a season of expectation, of celebration, and above all, of preparation. We come now because we want to be ready, 
ready to give thanks for your coming, ready for all the ways you come to us now, ready to welcome you when you come again. Open our hearts as we worship you, so that all we share during this service may give us a deeper understanding of this season and a fuller experience of your love. Now, I know that you're all very much aware of how much God loves us all. And I also know that you're also aware that throughout time, throughout history, God has tried to show that love in numerous ways. He's tried to help us in so many different ways to be the people that we were created to be, to live together in unity and harmony, helping each other, supporting each other and worshipping him. Problem is, we haven't been very good at it. Now, one of the ways that he's tried to help us was by giving us the Ten Commandments. Now, we don't often listen to the whole of the Ten Commandments, but I think today, on Advent Sunday, at the beginning of the year of the church's year, I think it is important for us to remind ourselves what all those commandments are and actually think about whether we are truly keeping them, not just in what we do, but also in what we think and how we feel. And as we do that, we can then ask God to help us to be better at keeping them and more become more the people he wants us to be. So, hear the commandments which God has given to his people and examine your hearts. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not dishonour the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honour your father and mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything which belongs to your neighbour. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these your laws in our hearts. Well, as we were going through those commandments, I hope in your heart and your mind you were truly engaging with them and asking yourself the question, am I really keeping those commandments? Am I keeping them not just in the way I behave, but also in the things that I think and the way I feel? Am I mo being motivated by good, by a desire to worship God and to support and love my neighbour? Am I happy with my life as it is because it's the life that God has given me? Am I content with it? And am I in a fit state to recognise and welcome Christ when he comes again? Well, as you're probably aware, today on Advent Sunday, one of the things that we start to do is to light the candles on our Advent wreath. As you know, there's five candles in all, one for each of the Sundays throughout Advent, and then the fifth one, which we light at Christmas. Each candle stands for a different person or group of people. And we have to we're, we're encouraged to think about them and what made them tick and about their relationship with God and how it fed them and to see 
whether that can help us. Now, our first candle, we think about the patriarchs. That's the founders of our faith. Abraham, Isaac, Moses, people like that. People who, for whom God was so important that they trusted him with absolutely everything, that they were prepared to follow his commandments, leave comfortable lives, and they had the courage to step out in faith and follow him. I wonder, how good are we at stepping outside of our comfortable lives and following him? I'm going to light the candle now. And as we see this candle burning, we think of the courage of the patriarchs, the faith of the patriarchs. Let us also think of how we behave and how we would behave when God calls us to act in a, in a certain way. So our prayers of penitence. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we see that one light shining in the gloom, because it is a gloomy day, let us uh, remember the light of Christ that shines through even the darkest moment as we say our collect for Advent. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I will now ask Heather Nola to bring us our Bible reading, and she will be followed by the sermon, which is being given to us by Bishop Rose. So the, the reading is taken from Mark, chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house in charge of his servants, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or at dawn. 
If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. And here ends the lesson. Today's Advent Sunday. Our buildings are closed for public worship due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But as the people of God, that does not deter us from setting time aside for prayer and worship, using all the available means possible to us. It was indeed the prophet Jeremiah who said, if he could not speak of God, call upon his name, that it would feel like fire shut up within his bones, just dying to get out. So it is my prayer that like Jeremiah, we too will have the sense of bursting with a desire to call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So may the words of my mouth the thoughts and meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to God, who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In today's Gospel reading from Mark, we read the words, keep alert, keep awake, keep awake. I wonder if we are thinking, how is it that Mark's Gospel has no story of the birth narrative and yet kicks off Advent for us. On reflection though, we may need to remind ourselves that Advent has to do with the coming of the Lord, with the birth narrative being but one form of the appearance of Christ. At the center of the Christian faith is the message of the one who comes to us, God incarnate, God dwelling amongst us, who comes to strengthen, to reveal, to judge, to redeem, and to love. And a people whose response should be repentance, expectancy, and hope. With this heightened sense of expectancy, we are to remain alert. Something is going to happen. Something is about to happen. So stay awake if you want to be a part of this. Advent is a time when we start preparing to meet God and all of our readings today tells us that this is no occasion for indecision or half-heartedness. This calls for serious contemplation. At the time when Mark wrote his gospel, Jerusalem and the temple lay in ruins. It was a time of civil unrest. They no doubt would have been thinking about the meaning of the purposes and meaning of God in the light of what they were facing. Some prophets had fed the war effort with messianic ideology. So how were the followers of Jesus to understand the destruction of the city and the temple added to the persecution at the hands of religious and political authorities? The anguish of the families torn apart by differing loyalties. And then there were the false messiahs claiming that this was indeed the second coming, signs of the end. With Jesus not in their midst, the people are left wondering, should we give over to despair or do we reach out for hope? I wonder how many of us have heard others say that the coronavirus is God's judgment. And they did that too with SARS, Ebola and other pandemics. How many of us each time there is a significant war or civil unrest lazily sits back and think this is surely the end times we're living in, thus directing our ministry towards a place of fear and despair instead 
of hope. We catch a glimpse of this in our Old Testament reading from Isaiah, set against the background of the Jewish people being in exile, alienated from their homeland, living as foreigners, suffering for their sins and estranged from God. In our reading, we find them in a place of lament. A lament is a prayer to God for help in the time of need. The lament refers to their distress and a plea to God to redeem them. So in the first four verses we read, Come down, God, make your name known. We know that you are the God who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. In verses 5 to 7, they share something of their distress. We know that you come to the help of those who do the right thing, those who remember your ways. But we have continued to live sinful lives, and even our righteous acts are like filthy rags, and you have hidden your face from us. But our given Old Testament text ends with a statement of confidence and divine favor in verses 8 to 9. You are our father, we are clay, and you are the potter. In effect, we are the work in your hands. Do not remember our sins, we are all your people. As we embark on the season of Advent, in the call to stay alert and to keep awake, we too do well to acknowledge that our pretend righteous acts are indeed like filthy rags. We profess to be following in the footsteps of Jesus, but somehow the lives we lead also tells a story of alienation and estrangement. Our actions do not match our so-called religiosity. We say we love God with our lips, but we fail to show that same love to all God's children. We also quarrel and fight amongst ourselves, and in doing so, we fail to reflect the heart of the Christian faith. The unrest we see all around us, the political unrest is born not from a place of love and care for our fellow humanity, but comes from a place of self-interest and the seeking of power. We must open our eyes, stay awake, stay alert. Failure to remain alert will see us drawn into the kind of distress and conflict that is evident in our world today. Conflicts that we perpetuate because we're not prepared to allow the light of Christ to shine into our lives. The prophet Isaiah, speaking to the people, seeks to highlight the predicament they face. The people's inequities have destroyed the substance of their lives, but there is a possibility of redemption. The people must repent and draw closer to God. In Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, he writes to strengthen the whole church collectively. Paul stresses that God is faithful and that the God who calls them into fellowship with Christ would sustain them to the end. Paul wrote at a time when there was considerable confusion within the Corinthian church concerning the last days. Spiritual arrogance was rife as some felt they had already experienced the second resurrection. Those who claimed greater and more impressive spiritual accomplishments were by their actions intimidating others. Paul is stressing in his letter to the Corinthian church the need for spiritual unity and Christ-like character. Today we lament that we sometimes actively seek division instead of unity. Stay awake, stay alert. Let's not be distracted by whatever is going on around us. No religious institution or those pretending to have a hotline to God will dictate the time, the place, or the form of God's advent. Our God survives 
all human structures and institutions. Sometimes having to shatter and recreate the communities that exist for God's work in the world. In other words, true hope is trust in the faithfulness of God. And this is what needs to be lived in our work and witness. The master left us for work to be done. He left us with work to be done. Let's get on with it and stop second guessing our God. To keep awake is to be faithful in our work as though we are already in the presence of the one who's coming our hearts are longing for. In the words of the hymn, longing for light we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. So stay awake, stay alert. Allow the light of Christ to shine brightly in our hearts and in our lives, changing our lives so that your changed life our changed life will indeed enable others' lives to be changed too. Stay alert, stay awake this season of Advent. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, Bishop Rose. Some wise words there. I hope you will all take on board her strong message that we should all live um, watchfully and expectantly and hopefully for the coming of our Lord once again. And as we do so, let us sing our next hymn, that wonderful Advent carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
well done. I don't know about you, but I was really belting that one out. It's really worth it, isn't it? Anyway, as we move on, I think it's time that we reminded ourselves of exactly who it is that we are watching and waiting for. Who it is who we are expecting to come, not hoping to come, but expecting to come, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. I will now ask Jackie Collins to lead us in our prayers. Everlasting God, as we come before you at the start of the season of Advent, we ask you to prepare us for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to hear us when we pray in faith for the needs of the Church and the world, and to thank you for your goodness. Lord, come to your Church as Lord and Judge. Almighty God, we pray for your Church today, gathering throughout the world to praise you and to hear your holy word. We pray for your blessing on those who lead, preach and teach. And we pray especially for our own clergy here in the Suttons as they seek to do your will and to guide us on our journey through Advent. At this special time when so much is expected of church and clergy, help them to find time for their own reflection and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, come to your world as King of the nations. We pray for peace in all countries torn apart by war, persecution, disease and famine. Govern the hearts and minds of all world leaders and those in authority that they may act justly, honestly and according to your will, especially at this time of the global pandemic. Heavenly Father, we pray that all people involved in conflict or oppression will come to reflect on Christ's command to love thy neighbour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, come to our community as Saviour. Father God, we pray for the spiritual health and welfare of our community. Advent is a time to reflect upon the wonders of your love and allow the story of the Saviour's birth to penetrate our hearts and minds. Let us try to set an example of a true spirit of preparation of the Christ child to those who we know who find the run-up to Christmas a busy and worrying time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, come to the suffering as healer and comforter. Merciful God, we pray for people in any kind of need and we give thanks to all who care for them. Be close today to the lonely, the despairing and the desperate. Bless with hope those who are unemployed, homeless, deserted and friendless. Give deep healing to the sick, the disturbed, the damaged and the lost. We especially remember at this time Jean Bird, Bob and Anne Chance, Shirley Edmonds, Tony Old, Di Beeman, Brian Jones, Hazel Pope and Tessa Webb. Comfort and heal all who suffer, particularly at this time of the COVID pandemic. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord, come to us as shepherd and guardian of our souls. Loving God, we pray for those who have recently died. May your light shine upon them forever and lives be richer because of their memory. In our community, we remember Dolly Rowe and Kitty Brand. Be near all who mourn and comfort them with the knowledge that the faithful departed will be granted a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Advent, Lord, draw near to us, strengthen our faith, deepen our love for you and for our neighbours and open our eyes to the wonder of your creation so that when our Saviour comes, he may find our hearts ready to receive him. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And gathering all our prayers and praises together, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. I have to say I am not 100% certain what is going to happen next week because we haven't yet had full guidance from the Church of England as to what we can and cannot do. However, I am working on the assumption that we will be able to worship in church again from next week, subject to all the restrictions that we had before we went back into this current lockdown. Now, working on that basis, there will be an eight o'clock service here in Headcorn next week. There will also be a 10 o'clock come and worship service, which will be quite a special one next week. That's here. There will also be a 10 o'clock service of Holy Communion at Sutton Valence, which I will be taking and will therefore be live streamed. So any of you who are watching via the internet, you can join me then. And there will be a six o'clock service of um, Eve, Eve, even said, because we can't sing at Chart Sutton. I'm afraid that the service of First Light that we did say that we would try and put on is not going to happen because the choir cannot meet. But if anything changes, we will do our best to make sure you know by putting the word around and putting notices on social media. Also, please bear in mind and please pass the word around that Next week would normally have been our Christingle service at Headcorn. As you know, we can't have our usual big Christingle service. So instead, we're making up Christingle packs. We're going virtual. And those packs will be available to collect from the Lich Gate at from 12 o'clock onwards next Saturday. We'll put something on the website and Facebook just to help you um, to get some meaning from it. We're hoping to put together quite a few things for Christmas, but I'm afraid it's a case of watch this space. But one thing I'm afraid I do have to say is that although our magazine said that the Tree of Remembrance would go in next week, I'm afraid it will now be the week after. Um, however, we will have the stars ready, so if people want to come along, take them away, fill them in. You can then bring them back for when the tree goes up. So, in the meantime, our closing prayer, and I hope you'll join me in saying it. Calm us to wait for the gift of Christ. Cleanse us to prepare the way for Christ. 
Teach us to contemplate the wonder of Christ. Touch us to know the presence of Christ. Anoint us to bear the life of Christ. Amen. And Christ, the Son of righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and all those who you love and care for now and always. Amen. Amen.